Welcome back to the Independent Republican Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Now, there's an awful lot of rubbish that goes on uh, in the general big, big wide world out there. Uh, we've just spoken uh, there with Sarah Fillimore about the nonsense of hate crime and how ridiculous some hate crimes are actually supposedly purported to be. But how about this? Stereotypes that are insensitive, right? The latest is Bake Off. Now, Bake Off is not a show that I particularly enjoy, but I know an awful lot of people do. But it's been criticised, apparently, because the hosts, Noel Fielding and Matt Lucas, were spotted wearing sombreros. That's right, sombreros. And sarapes? Sarapes? I don't know how you even pronounce it. While making a joke. Now, they're being accused of being prejudiced against Mexican people. Apparently, the uh, serape is a colourful cloak, and they made a pun about Juan, which, of course, is a name that a lot of, an awful lot of people who are Hispanic have. They also played the maracas. Now, there's a lot of things to be worked up about in this world, and I don't think Bake Off, making a bit of a gesture and making a bit of a, a sort of a sketch about Mexico and Mexican people is a problem. But we've got, don't forget... The academics of this world, who don't seem to have any kind of sense of humour whatsoever, Dr Gabriela Ramos, Associate Professor of Latin American History at Cambridge University, said that while she did not wish to make a scandal out of the programme, it said there was a problem of education. She said it indicates a lack of interest and poor information in this country about other parts and people of the world. Have you ever been to Mexico? If you go to Mexico and you go to the tourist areas of Mexico, you will see a lot of sombreros. You can buy a sombrero and wear it. People who live in Mexico and operate sombrero shops quite like it if you buy a sombrero because that's how they make their money. They also quite like it if you bought a little fake cactus. It's not stereotyping. It's called a souvenir. Now, if you want to dress up and have a, some celebration of Mexican food, what's wrong with that? Are you going to tell me that if you go to a Mexican restaurant there's a sombrero on the wall that somehow they need to be prosecuted now? For, you know, intimidating people? Making people feel somehow that they're insensitive? What is going on in the world? I think it's very clear to me that academics are to blame for an awful lot of this rubbish. You know, we know that universities and university lecturers in particular are the people who propagate this kind of nonsense. So please stop doing it. But you know what's going to happen, don't you? Because the TV company that produces Bake Off will go, oh, we didn't mean to offend anyone, we just immediately take off all of those episodes that involve anybody dressed as a Mexican. We'll make sure that they never wear a sombrero again. I mean, come on, guys. Would you lighten up? I'm going out for some tacos, and there happens to be a sombrero on the, on the, on the wall. You know, get over it. But don't worry, we've got plenty more crises to talk about because now we're about to move into an energy crisis, right? So now they're telling us that uh, not only will the pound uh, die, not only will Britain die as a country, now uh, we're going to have blackouts and you're going to have to get used to having three hours of electricity a day uh, and you're just going to have to eat a lot of cold sandwiches and have no baths whatsoever. It'd be like going back to the 70s. Listen, I grew up in the 70s, I had a great time. Um, I came of age, I uh, had my first girlfriend, uh, left school, went to university, saw Led Zeppelin at Nebworth. It was a great decade, so don't worry about it. If you can't have heating all the time, just get used to it. Uh, if you drink cold tea, you'll be all right. Uh, it'll, it'll make you stronger and a better person. And quite frankly, the kids these days need a bit of um, straightening out. So I'm looking forward to a bit of austerity. Uh, of course, I'm only joking. Uh, but Jeremy Carl said he was upset because people were having to go in for scaremongering. Nobody's scaremongering here. The only people who are scaremongering are the government. I'm sorry to tell you that uh, <laughs> uh, the lights have gone out and there's nobody home. Would well, you know that phrase, you know, the lights are on but there's nobody home? You won't be saying that anymore because uh, what you'll be saying is that the lights are off and everybody's at home uh, because actually uh, the lights have all gone off because there's been a power cut. I remember these things, right? I tell you what, I used to quite like the power cuts. There's nothing wrong with the power cut. You sit around, people, my, chick, my kids say to me, what did you do all day? Well, we sat around talking. I went outside, went on my bike, rode around, you know, went to a couple of record shops, hung out for a bit. They didn't have any power either, but they still had the doors open. So you could still buy records, you just couldn't listen to them. <laughs> There's nothing wrong uh, with a little bit of austerity. 
we are used to having this luxurious lifestyle. I've already asked the engineers to sort this problem out, uh, but apparently we're conserving energy. You know what? This is what's going to happen next, right? You're going to get told by some bozo uh, that you must conserve energy because people love telling you what to do. I'll tell you a story about what happened to me this morning. As I was walking towards the workplace, I was walking past Guy's Hospital, which is on my way, and they've got some scaffolding currently up there, right? Now, they've got a very small, narrow road. It's a two-way road. Ambulances go in, taxis go in, people get dropped off. It's not. There's nobody driving very fast there. So the scaffolding forces you to walk in the road. So they've put up one of those orange fences, right, which is one of those, you know, construction fences that you see everywhere now. And there's two people, one at either end of it, right? There's no reason for this, but there's two people, one at either end, both wearing orange suits, not just high-vis jackets, high-vis suits. And they're standing there... And they're standing there in order to direct you inside the fence, right? If you were to go outside of the fence, nothing bad would happen. If you were to start across the road, nothing would happen. So I go to walk towards the sort of opening of this fence, and I see that somebody's coming the other way. And there's only really room for one person, so I thought, I oh, know, I'll just cross the road. So the guy in front of me in the orange suit starts doing all this, like pointing in the direction of where the fence is. And I'm going... And I just looked at him and went... I'm going the other way, mate. I'm going over there. I'm going that way. And, he's, and he was sort of saying, you've got to walk through here. I said, well, I don't want to. Why have I got to walk through there? There's no reason for me not to cross the road. That's what I'm doing. Thank you.